Okay, welcome back. Um, we're going to first learn how to name ionic compounds, okay? And as with, you know, with um, making the formulae for ionic compounds, ionic compounds are very, very easy to work with, both in terms of coming up with the formulas or in terms of uh, writing their names, okay? So, the title for this video is Naming Ionic Compounds. Okay. All right. So let's pick one. And before that, I want to share the slide with you that I've created, which summarizes everything in one slide. Okay. Now, as with any ionic compounds, this rule would apply on this slide. Okay. The slide is already available on Moodle under Week Three Material. So, just look for ionic compounds slide, okay, PowerPoints, okay. Now, uh, with any ionic compound, now we're, we're not including transition metals. Remember, ionic compounds are purely alkali and alkaline earth metals with a non-metal, right. So, typically your metal should be written as it is without any changes to its name. The non-metal, however, because we're only going to work with these non-metals here, sulfur, oxygen, bromine, chlorine, iodine and fluorine. These are the only changes you have to make to the actual name by adding a uh, suffix at the very end, replacing a few letters. Okay? So, let's go back to, to our example. Say this is Na, say I give you NaCl. This is a formula and you have to write the name. As I said, the metal always appears first in any, any, even in a covalent compounds, you saw the one that donates appeared first and the one that accepts appeared after. That's kind of a trend. So, this is your metal, this is your non-metal, right? The metal always appears first, even in the formula and then the non-metal appears following that, okay? So, I'm going to switch to a different color. So, let us say black. So, with the metal, as I said in my directions, you do not really make any changes to it. So, it is just say sodium, right? Now, the non-metal, if it is a, if it ends with an I and E, like chlorine, okay? This is chlorine. If it ends with an I and E, it is replaced by IDE. Now, there is no magic way to teach this other than just say this is fact, okay? There are some times in a chemistry class where you, you do run into some facts that no matter how many different ways it is taught, it is a fact in the end. Okay? So, I suggest this is there's only three things you remember it, but if you can come up with a mnemonic or a song or something like that, just your way of remembering it, then feel free to do that as well. All right? So, chlorine would be you just change only the I and E part to the I D E part. So, sodium chloride. Ionic compounds are fairly the easiest bunch to work with. Okay? So, this is sodium chloride. All right? So, let us go back and pick our red color again and let us try a different compound. Okay? B E C L 2. Okay? This is again a metal. This is a non-metal. So, the metal part is written as it is. I mean, if you are off by a letter, like instead of writing beryllium with a 2 R, say you write it with 1 R, I do not care if that is not so big of a deal. And then chlorine is, you just replace it with the, the I and E part with the I D E. So, that is beryllium chloride. Okay? Now, I did have other things. So, sodium let us say I give you this. Okay? Just because the Na as a 2 does not change anything, everything we have learned. Okay? So, let me go get a different color. It does not matter whether it is 2, 3, 4, etc. The sodium is a metal. That is all matters. Okay? So, sodium. Okay? And as I said, if your letter like sulfur ends with U R, you change it to I D E. Okay, if you notice, I D E is kind of the suffix, 
but you have to replace you know you should know where to replace the ur you don't want to say sulide it's sulfide so sodium sulfide is the name for it okay and what's the other one one more all right so let's say i have this na 2 o okay that is again the same sodium is the same okay oxygen anything ending with the oxygen you got to change a whole bunch the y g e n becomes i d e it's always i d e but where how many letters you're replacing again it's just a matter of i don't know how there's not rocket science so there's not a whole need for too many educational techniques here just sodium oxide but if you notice in all these cases that the metal remains unchanged it's only the non-metal that goes through some suffix attached to the original name and so we have done sodium chloride, beryllium chloride, sodium sulfide, and sodium oxide. Keep in mind, most of your ionic compounds are between any of the alkali and alkaline earth metals, but 98% of ionic compounds involve chlorine, bromine, fluorine, iodine, sulfur, oxygen, okay, and phosphorus, which we haven't looked at. But so you don't really have to memorize a whole lot. I mean, so far. Everything I've taught you into week three until now, this is probably the only thing I, I would have I would have recommend that you memorize, because the rest of it, the way I have taught or presented, it's more of understanding the material than memorizing any of it. So up until this particular screen, I don't think you have to memorize anything I have taught you. Okay, so I'm gonna stop here, and then when I come back, I'm gonna teach you how to name. Um, covalent compounds.